Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I want to talk about the Excel 2019 exam, and we're going to look at the domain called Manage Data Cells and Ranges. Overall, this accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so that you can see what we're looking at today. This video started to get a little bit long, so we're going to break this up into two parts. This is the second video, and in this video, we're going to cover subdomain 2, Format Cells and Ranges and subdomain three, define and reference named ranges. Let's go ahead and jump into Excel. We're talking about the Excel 2019 exam and we're looking at the domain called manage data cells and ranges. This accommodates for 20 to 25% of the overall exam. We're looking at the subdomain called Format Cells and Ranges. This subdomain says that we should be able to merge and unmerge cells. We're going to look at a few of the merge options. For my first example, I'm going to select a lot of cells. So we'll do A1 to K3. I'm on the Home tab. I'm in the Alignment group, and I have Merge and Center. I'm going to open up this dropdown so that you can see all of the options here. The first one we're going to look at is Merge and Center. I'm getting a message here telling me that I'm only going to be able to keep the upper left value and it's going to disregard all of that other text. So the information found in A2 and A3 is going to disappear. We'll click OK for this example. And notice I have one cell, the text is center, and it discarded everything else. I'm going to hit Control Z on my keyboard to undo what I've done. Let's go in and look at some of the other merge options. So for this one, I'm going to select Merge Across and watch what happens. What Excel has done this time is I have three cells. And what it did was it just merged each row. I'm going to do Control Z on my keyboard again to undo what I've done so that we can look at this last option, Merge Cells. Again, I'm getting a message telling me it's only going to keep the top left cells information. For this example, it's OK. We'll click OK. Notice this time I have one cell, but the data is in the bottom left hand corner of the cell. And then let's look at our last merge option, which is to unmerge cells. The unmerge unmerged everything, but notice that I lost a lot of my information because it was deleted. We'll do Control Z a couple times to get that back. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to modify cell alignment, orientation, and indentation. Let's look at alignment first. Let me go ahead and merge these cells across just so that we get a better visual of what's happening. And what I'll do is I'll open up this row one with my cursor in this first cell. I'm on the Home tab, I'm in the Alignment group, and currently we have this option selected Bottom Align, but I have a Mid Align, brings that to the middle of the cell, and I also have a Top Align. In addition to those settings, I have the Left Align, which it currently is set at, I have a Center, and I have a Right Align. In that little section, there's really a lot of alignment options that you can choose from. Let's look at Orientation. So with this cell selected, I'm still in my alignment group and I have this right here, the orientation drop down. And I have quite a few different abilities. I can angle it counterclockwise, clockwise. I can have the vertical text. I can rotate my text up or I can rotate my text down. And if I click format cell alignment, in this window I have some more alignment options and I can make some orientation changes here. But this window brings up the last point and that's indentation. In my alignment group, I do have the ability to change my indentation in or out, but I also have that from the text alignment section. Currently, I have the horizontal right indent alignment, but there's other indentations I can choose from, for example, left. And then I can actually change my indentation value. So maybe I want five. Let me move that down. Now watch what happens when I click OK. Notice it went ahead and it brought that over five steps. This subdomain says that we should be able to format cells by using the Format Painter. This is one of my favorite features in Excel. In A4, I have blue fill, white text, and I have the text bold. There's really not a lot going on for this specific cell, but let's say I had a border and italics and a bunch of other settings, and I needed to apply the exact formatting to another cell. There's a feature in Excel that can copy that for you. With my cursor in A4, I'm on the Home tab, I'm in the Clipboard group, and what I want to do is select Format Painter. Now if you look at my cursor, you can see that my cursor's changed, I have a paintbrush attached to it. Watch what happens when I click on Ryan's name. 
Notice that the same formatting that I found in A4 has now been applied to A6. I have my cursor in A6. This time I'm going to double click on Format Painter. And what that's going to allow me to do is click on multiple cells at the same time. And that formatting is still loaded. And when I'm done clicking on cells, if I hit the Escape key, it'll cancel out the formatting option for copying. We're told that we need to be able to wrap text within cells. So if I select Row 4, I'm on the Home tab. I'm in the alignment group. If I click on wrap text, notice that the text drops. This subdomain tells us that we also need to be able to apply number formats. I'm going to go ahead and select my range F5 to J9. And with that selection, I'm on the home tab. I'm in the numbers group and I have some quick drop down settings that I can choose from. I also have the ability to apply it in accounting number format. I have a percentage. I can change the decimal places if I chose to. But in addition to what I see here, if I click the number dialog box launcher, I have the ability to make even more advanced changes. I have a number here, so I can change my decimal places. I can add a separator with a comma, and I can choose how negative numbers are presented. But let's look at date because there's really a lot in the date feature. Now, the numbers that I have aren't date, so it won't really work with this data, but you can see there's a lot of different ways that the date would be displayed. And each section in the category has a different set of features that you can apply for number formatting. Go ahead and click cancel for this. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to apply cell styles. So I'm going to put my cursor on A2. I'm on the home tab. I'm in the styles group. And if I click this more drop down, in this group, we have a lot of cell styles that we can choose. For example, we have some heading here. Maybe I want to apply this heading to. If I click off that, we can see that the font changed and there is a bottom border added. And if I wanted to do something different for A3, maybe I want to give this right here the accent 5 for blue. And notice that went ahead and applied that cell style for me. And then finally, as I'm looking over this sheet, maybe I've decided I don't like any of the formatting that's going on. And that makes sense. We're told that we need to be able to clear cell formatting. To do that, I'm on the Home tab. I'm in the Editing group. I'm going to click the Clear drop down. And in this section, I actually have quite a few options for clearing. I can clear everything, or I can clear just the formats or the contents and the comments or hyperlinks. For this, maybe I just want to clear the formats. So if I click that, Notice that my cells are no longer merged and it brought it back to its default. Let's look at one of the other clear settings. If I click D7 here and I go back, let's clear all this time and see what happens. Notice that it cleared everything. There's no information in that cell. The formatting's gone. If I type in something new, it doesn't apply any special format. That clear section is small, but there's a lot of power in the features listed there. We're looking at the subdomain called Define and Reference Named Ranges. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to define a named range. There are multiple ways to name ranges. I'm going to show you two in this video. I'm going to go ahead and select F5 to F9, and this is going to be our first named range. The first way to do it is, to me, a little bit more complicated, is after you select your data, you need to go to the Formulas tab. We're in Define Names, and what we're going to do is click on Name Manager. From here, we're going to select New. Excel has predicted that we want to name the range Monday. That's good. We'll keep it as Monday. Our scope, we have the option of putting it within this workbook or worksheet. We'll leave it in the workbook. That's fine. We can add comments here. And we have the option of changing the range that was selected, but what we selected is what we want. We'll click OK. And now we've created a named range. Named ranges are important for this exam. It's part of a different domain, but you could be asked to use a named range in a formula. We'll close out of this because I'm going to show you another way to name a range. Let's go ahead and select Wednesday's data. With that range selected, right here in the name box, it currently just says H5. But if I click in here and I type in Wednesday and I hit Enter, that's now a named range. There are benefits to going through the name manager. But if you just need to quickly make a named range, the name box is far easier than having to go to the correct ribbon and opening up that window to create the named range. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to name a table. So let's go ahead and select this range right here and we'll quickly make a table out of it. With my cursor in this table, I get a special tab at the top, Table Tool Design tab. 
and all the way to the left, I have the ability to name my table. Right now it's table one, but with that name selected, I can name it whatever I want. Let's go ahead and type in hours and we'll hit enter to set that text. Now this table has the name hours. And if I go back to that formulas tab and we go to the name manager, we have a table named hours. We have a named range Monday and we have a named range Wednesday.